Mm. Hello, coders. Welcome to what is it? Wednesday morning. It's uh, seven a.m. in uh, the UK here. Uh, today, what I've done, or what I would like to do, is discuss some changes that I've made to the uh, Free Code Camp PHP object-oriented programming course that uh, I've been I've been working on. I've been demonstrating. Um, and what I would like to to show is the things that I've actually been fixing. So. Uh, yesterday, I managed to do a, a fair amount of work on the train because I went to see a freelance client yesterday. Um, so I was working on the train there and then on the way back, I managed to get a table seat on both of those journeys, which was awesome. I also did a bit of work, I think, on Monday, Monday night. So I think in total, I've managed to do something like a quarter of a day to half a day's work. And I've got things working. I've actually got things working on the router. Uh, I'll just quickly show you. If we go to the browser here, uh, we have home, we have invoices. We've seen all of these before. So if I click on that, we get to the invoice and we get to there, we go to the home page. But if I click on the invoice one, two, three, we can see that we have this invoice. This is the invoice page for invoice one, two, three. Now this one, two, three is actually the URL that we're putting in. So that's actually the ID um, that we're parsing into the, the router. And then the router is, or that's the request, and then that's being matched and then put through the whole controller action process and then put, put into a view. So I've done, I've done an awful lot of work. Um, let's go back to the code. <clears throat> I'll see what I've done. I'll show you what I've done. So. I also updated Co um, Composer as well because there was a couple of things that I wanted to pick up. But if I go back to the code here, we'll take it from the we'll take it from the start. So we have um, changed. Well, first of all, go through the uh, the smallest changes. We've moved the Bootstrap from where where it was in the helper kernel. We've moved the Bootstrap to the config. Um, because I feel that that is more config-esque than it is in the kernel. Um, so that's the first change. <coughs> um, nothing really has changed in here much, to be honest. Um, we're still doing the validation. We're still making the routes and all of this jazz. Um, but we've also added the uh, some more paths in. If I go to the config, we've added the config path um, as well. Because now we're we're outside of the kernel, I wanted to access the config from other places. So if I go to the kernel, um, we can see that. Well, let's just take it from the index page. I'll take it from the index page first, and I'll show you from there. So that's in public. That's in index.php. Um, so it's it's more it's a little bit more streamlined now because all we're doing is we're saying I want the bootstrap. I don't want the config. I want the bootstrap. From the bootstrap, we then get the config, um, and we can set up the uh, the, the, the defined uh, uh, variables um, from there. <coughs> then we're doing just response kernel boot. So this is a little bit more simplified. Um, it's a little bit more streamlined. It's a little bit more cleaner, I think. So we're we're getting the roots from the uh, boot bootstrap because what's happening here is on the bootstrap. Uh, in config bootstrap, we are um, returning root data from routing. And then what we're doing is we're passing the roots into the kernel. So that that's that's how it was. But it, things get slightly interesting when we get to the kernel. Let's boot this thing. Um, so when we boot that, we're actually running a server factory. Now, the server factory for the request um, I did this yesterday because I had problems. I wanted to test this, um, and I had problems where the tests didn't have the server variables inside it. And then I started thinking, well, this is very awkward to test. Um, maybe this is uh, this is an architectural issue. Maybe um, I need to look at what a request actually is. What is the definition of a request? Um, and the definition of the request, in my opinion, or part of it, at least, is that you can have a request from many things, one being a server request. Um, 
So a server request would have the server variables, but you could also have a request from other things as well. You could have a request from um, or to a command line application uh, and so forth. And then I thought, well, okay, with that in mind, it's probably best to uh, abstract this a little bit. So what we've done is we've got the server factory. I'll just show you that. Um, and it's fairly straightforward, right? So we have uh, a factory with this uh, static uh, public static function, which is just make, passing in a query string and a method. But the server factory requires that you have the server variables. And if there is no server variables, then you throw this URI uh, exceptions or the, the method exception. Then you part, then you set the path and the method. Now the reason why we're passing in uh, the string and the method here is because we are implementing a factory interface. The factory interface requires that you need to put in the query string and the method. So what I was thinking, my trail of thought, is that you could have not only a server factory, but you could have a command line factory, a CLI factory. You could have other factories that make requests um, and you can pass in um, default values to those things. But uh, the magic for the server factory is that it, requ it, it needs, it's in HTTP here, uh, duh, 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 duh. where are we, in request factory type um, server factory. The magic of the server factory is it, is it, is it requ before we're, we're even setting these things, we, we need to require you to have that. And so that allowed me to test this part of the functionality more easily because then I could create um, other factories that don't require these servers that do create requests objects. And this is what we're doing. We're just returning a request object, but it's how that request object is being uh, manufactured through the factory. Notice I'm saying sort of uh, industrial terms there. Um, it's how that that mechanism works um, is the key here. And the, the, the definition of, of, of the server factory is that it needs server variables to work. Um, okay, so that's the server factory. So let's go back to the do 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 do. Where did we go from here? It was kernel and we are, here we go. Okay, so now we, uh, we do the locator. Now I did, I was stuck when we go back to, when I go into locate, I was stuck. Um, where was I stuck? I was stuck somewhere. Oh yeah, here. <clears throat> this is where I was stuck last time. So um, when we are building the the route to match, right? Um, I was stuck because uh, I need. I wanted a way of of injecting some placeholders for um, parameters of the URL. And I was getting myself into a bit of a confusion because I did think, well, hang on a minute, I need to use something like uh, uh, reg regular expressions to to add those things in, to replace those. And then at the end of that stream, I believe it was on Monday, I, I then thought, well, no, this isn't a, a regular expression. This is actually just a, a string replacement. So I created some uh, an awful lot of different ways of doing this, and then I boiled it down to a single uh, method static method and I'm calling this URI builder uh, and then build. Uh, before I show you this though, what I'll do is I'll demonstrate what I mean by this. So let's go to the um, the routing and what I would like, what, what I wanted to achieve is to have this sort of uh, placeholder where we have curly braces and then the a placeholder, so ID, and then what I would like is some sort of uh, string replacement to replace all of those with whatever is the corresponding ID within the parameters. It's the same for the editing here um, that I haven't actually put in yet, but it's, the, it, so from this perspective, it would be so uh, like this. Whoops, if I can, if my magic keyboard, which isn't always magic, if we can pop that in like that, and then I would copy that and paste that in like so. This also means if I wanted to, this also means that I could actually have defaults in here as well. Uh, so if, if the ID was always going to be five, then I could do that. And that would replace that with, 
with whatever this is. And what I'm doing is I'm terming this as the key and this is the pattern because the pattern is what's going to be replaced up here. Okay. So I came up with um, a lot of solutions for this over on the train, and then I and then I just thought, well, no, this is daft. I'm 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 over complicating. I'm over over egging my pineapple here. Um, what I needed to do was I needed to create. If I go back to the kernel, go into locate, I needed to create just a simple way. Well, I shouldn't say simple. It never is. Just a way of doing a string replacement. So if I go to the build, this is what we what I ended up doing. So this is a, uh, a, a public static function again. It's called build. It returns a string and we're passing in the URI. Now the URI is the raw representation of that um, string with the placeholders in place. The parameters are the parameters that have been matched from the, um, from, from the root. And then what I'm doing here is I'm doing a loop. So I'm for eaching those parameters, which are in here, as parameter, parameter being the key, right? And then we get the pattern. And then we're saying, okay, URI, right, is a string replacement of anything where we're searching for um, the, uh, the open curly brace, closing curly brace, and in between the parameter or the key, um, and then we're replacing that with a pattern and we, we, we are using the URI as the subject. So this is going to con continually loop over each one of those parameters. Um, and then after that, yeah, I, was using, I was using the constants for the uh, deliminator and then I thought, well, you know, that's just adding more complications. So let's just put it in the string. So let's just return this. So this single little method here, which is like, what, a couple of lines, four lines, something like that, five lines, I don't know, PHP six lines because of the braces. Ah, uh -huh, I miss Python. Um, this little thing here is is the thing that builds the URI. Um, and uh, and it's working, it's working quite well. Uh, well, you saw it, I demonstrated it, I, I, I did that. So that, that what that's doing there is it's saying, okay, this parameter has the, um, the ID in here, and we're going to, uh, and the 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 the, pa the sorry the parameter is um, is the uh, the the regu regular expression which is the zero to nine thing. So we're going to replace that, which is um, curly brace ID curly brace with if I go up here, where's the routing? Where's the routing? Routing. I'm going to replace uh, this, yeah, with this. And I'm doing that because I know that that matches that. So that that works. <clears throat> okay, um, and, and then and then what I did I did some other uh, other work uh, around just faffing about making things a little bit more streamlined. So um, if I did locate, and I should say that uh, I I was going to do this within this locator. Uh, class, but then I thought, well, you know, this isn't the responsibility of the locator class to build the URI in which I'm locating. Um, that is the responsibility of something else. Um, and, and I wanted to try and keep this um, as clean as possible. I do, however, have um, this method in here, which I've created, which is handle request parameters. Um, now what we're doing here is we're passing in the uh, the root that has been matched. So if I scroll up to the top here, uh, so at this point we have the matches. Uh, I've also called this match URI. I should point out this uh, because because it's 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 kind of like it makes more sense when I'm reading it. So I'm building the URI. I'm matching the URI. I'm handling the request parameters. Um, all done within this locate, which probably should be called root match. To be honest. Um, so handle parameters, we pa pass in the root that was found and we get the matches, the array of matched um, uh, parameters. Now, remember the first ever uh, um, value that's, that's in that uh, array is the actual um, pattern that was, re was matched, all right? So we have to remove the first index of that and we're doing that within the handle request parameters. So... I've already got, whoops, I've already 
in, uh, injected, I've already injected the uh, request object. Um, and oh, something else I should point out is what I'm doing here is I'm saying, well, if you know, request object could be null, and if it is null, then we just generate a new request. I'm not really happy with this uh, solution. Um, it was kind of one of those hacky things I did just to get a test to work. Um, so I'm not overly happy with this. I would like to change it. But anyway, let's go sc scrolling down here to handle request parameters. So we, we have the root that's in, that's already, um, that has been uh, injected into this class. Sorry, the request that has been injected into this class. The root is the root that has been found based off of the, um, the match URI, which if I just show you, is this now. This is uh, looking a little bit more simpler. I could probably put that into a tenary operator to make this even smaller, which I'll probably do. Um, we're just doing a PREG match and we're getting matches. Um, so if the matches are empty, then we return null. If it's not, then we return the matches. Um, in fact, I could probably just return matches to be honest. But anyway, let's scroll down here. So now we have the matches, we have the root, and we have the request that has been injected into this class. If we go to the handle request parameters, come on, come on PHP Storm, let me do that. Okay, so we're in here, I'm just gonna grab a slurp me tea. So that's the root that's been found. These are the parameters or the matches that we've got. Remember, we're having to unset the first uh, uh, parameter because the the first parameter is always the result that has actually been the full result that has actually been used uh, so we remove that but we only do that if that is found because you know belt and braces check there <coughs> then remember I said that um, when you do that you're you, you're not re-indexing the array the array will then be from start with the index of one rather than zero when you unset something from the array, you're not actually changing the keys of that array. Um, you're just removing that value, that uh, that that portion of the array. Uh, you need to then re-index the array, and you do that by running array values, because that will then uh, get the values of that array and re-index it, or or sort that indexing out. Then this on line 92 looks a little bit awkward. Um, what this is doing is it's combining the parameters of the get of the root get parameters with the parameters now um, the first thing we're doing here is that what we need to achieve is we need to achieve a, a way of mapping the the parameters of the root of the root to the parameters that we've matched right so in here we'll have all the values so we'll have id and then uh, one, two, three, right? So the key will be ID. Uh, well, no, the, sorry, the key in this parameters would be uh, zero and the value would be one, two, three. So I'll tell you what, what I'll do, let's put some comments in. So let's just do parameters. So at this point, we have the uh, the parameters would be something like um, index zero, and then the the ID is one two three, right? And the the root get parameters would be something like um, we would have the key of ID. And then we would have the actual pattern, right? So we would have something like uh, zero to nine, um, like like so, Some, something like that, right? So what we would like to achieve is this. So where we have, um, say, let's do updated parameters. We would like to have the ID, and I should put that in, um, is it's a string, we would like to do something like that. All right, that is what we would like to achieve. So we have the parameters at this point um, where we have a key, which is just a numerical key, it doesn't mean anything. 
we're just doing we're, we're running array values just to re-index it just because we we want to we don't even have to do that if we don't want to well we have the value here <coughs> um, on the root that has been found we have a get parameters uh, routine that returns the 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 parameters which match the same parameters as this okay so if I can find that code again <laughs> down here so what we would like to do um, is have a cup of tea in my run PHP mug uh, we would like to map or I should use the word combine these two arrays using the key of the parameters and the value of um, of the matched parameters which is this one and this is what we this one here and that is what we would like to achieve so in order to do this both um, both arrays must be equal um, you must have both equal amounts in here and at this point in the routine that is the case because we've got the the, the, the matched parameters and we've got the uh, the root parameters as well so what we do here is we get the array keys of the parameters which means that this would no longer be like that this would now be root parameters key keys would now be like this so we have uh, zero and then ID okay so that is now the key that that is now an array of the keys we then pass in the, the, the array of the parameters which is this so what we've done is we would like what we would like to finally uh, get out from this is we would like to do um, ba -ba 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 -ba. yeah we would like to do that that's what we would like to do and we're using the key and we use the, the the keys here so this would be if I was to do this in sort of pseudo code this would be uh, get parameters or, or root dot parameters dot keys harping back to the Python a little bit uh, and then that would then equal to the uh, parameters dot value that's essentially what we're doing here in this in this line an array combine will combine the keys and the values once that's achieved and and you need to make sure that that has achieved so we do if updated we then set the parameters um, and and we so we that returns an array like in that representation uh, and that and then that sets it and then what we do because we're setting that against the request is we we just return the request which means that the request object that has been injected into this class now has the parameters based upon this okay so that was the that was the sort of the crucial clinching point uh, of that I hope that made a, um, a bit of sense there <coughs> So then what we do is what we, we've done before is we, we set found root is equal to root and then we break and we return the root. Fine. Excellent. Okay. Um, so we go back to the kernel here. Um, so we've done the locate. We've returned the found root. We check that there is an instance of the root. And if it's not, then we return a 404. I still have that issue with the error page that's still not working, which is a shame. Uh, and then we, have, um, we get the controller name. Um, and then we instantiate the new controller name and we run the get action and we pass in the request 
that we've just manipulated. So now the request has that array, has that set of parameters that we've created. Okay, now things get start starting to get interesting because uh, if we move over here, um, we, we now return that. If I go back into the index page, how do we actually run the response? How do we actually do that? All I'm doing here is I'm saying response is e equal to kernel boot. What I could do is just not have the response because the response variable isn't actually being isn't actually doing anything. So what's happening? Well, let's go to the boot. Sorry, let's bring that back a bit. <coughs> the magic happens in the get action routine of the of the root. The get action is the action upon that controller. All right, as we as we we've discussed before. If I go to the routing. We go controller, which is invoice, and then the action is edit. So that's the edit action within the controller. That represents the a method called edit. Same with index on here. Okay, so now we need to turn our attention to the controllers. So if we go to the controller, we go into the type, we go into, let's say, uh, let's use the uh, the home one first, and I'll, then I'll show you the uh, the invoicing one. So this is where the magic happens. Uh, we we now return a static um, render of a class called view. Now, what on earth is this all about? So let's click on view. View is in um, HTTP and it's in response and then view. So this is a new class that I've created. Um, again, a very small public static method. This is the, the, I see these static methods like utility methods, right? These are things that you don't have to create as objects. These are things that you can just use uh, in a very static way. They're not they're not terribly dynamic. You can't you can't instantiate a static uh, any any static stuff. You can't you can't um, use this you know the variable this in statics that doesn't work these are just simply like functions that you can that one can use um and they, they've been working quite well so here what we're doing is we're supplying the template and we're supplying the parameters now the parameters are obviously the parameters from that request so what i'll do is i'll just uh i'll just show you if we go back to the um the kernel, we're, we're instantiating the controller, so that would be home in this case, and we would be running the get action. <coughs> running the get action, so that would be uh, index in this case, and we would be passing in the request. So if I go up to um, the home here, so we're running the home controller, we're running the index action, and we're passing in the request. Okay, so we're not actually doing anything with request on this page, but we will be doing something with the invoicing because that's how we get the parameters out. And I'll just I'll explain all of that in just a second. So on line 12, what we're doing is we're saying I want to render the view and I want to return that. So if we go to the render function, this is doing a, a an ob start. So this is starting the object buffer. We're extracting the parameters that we've given from here. Um, which means that we we can now have the ability to to set those as variables, right? Um, and I'll I'll discuss that in just a second. Um, and then what we we do is we <coughs> we include the template, and the template is defined in the action. So if I go to the home, that is the first parameter that we define here. Okay. So what we're saying is we once that root has been uh, established once that has been found, we can then uh, include this template. So views, home, and then index. So that would be. Let me see. That would be in. <clears throat> that would be in public views home index. So at that point, we then run hello from the home page, and we also include the 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 the, the base template here. That's a pretty boring example. Um, I'll just show you a little bit more of a, an interesting one. Let's go to the to the invoice. Okay, so let's take it from the top. So we load the invoice ID. So we go forward slash invoice forward slash one, two, three. 
it does all of the 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 magic to match all the of all of the roots and it picks this one out it then does the magic to uh, deal with the parameters so now we have in our request object we have uh, parameters ID and then that would be one two three excellent okay so we go back to let's go back to the uh, da -da 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 kernel 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 where did that go whoops <clears throat> here um, okay so we've got that and we return the uh, the action that rep is represented by the found root and we pass in the request so in this case this would be invoice this would probably be index I'll check that in just a minute and we pass in that request which has the array where we have the uh, ID um, and the um, the IDs value so we go to the controller that goes to invoice and um, we go to it is the index here so we want to render out that view um, so views invoice index.php but we also want to supply an array of parameters um, that we've got from the request so we do ID okay so we put that in as the key that is going to be the variable name that we use so that is the ID if you're familiar with uh, Symfony then this this is I wouldn't say it's similar it's quite far away but you know it's kind of like how they do a, 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 a rendering the parameters sort of ish probably not but you know what I mean when you, on the controller you have you have the first parameter which is the template and then you have the second parameter uh, which is the, the 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 things that you want to pass to twig obviously I'm not using twig so it, it you know that's where the the example the comparison falls um, but here I'm saying I want to I want to supply a variable called ID to the template and I want that to have this property and remember I had that get parameter where I was able to put in the the ID that I would want to get and I believe there is a second parameter I think you can see on the screen where I can put in default if that parameter doesn't exist excellent okay so let's run that through so we go to the render so that is the template uh, name that goes to the invoice that is the array of parameters that we want to supply to the template we're doing again the um, the uh, object buffer start we're extracting the parameters here which means that we now have an ID called uh, sorry a variable called ID which has the value of one two three and then we are including the template <coughs> So it's just, it's a little bit clunky at the moment. It's a little bit sort of, um, <clears throat> it, it, you know, it, I mean, it works, right? But it's a little bit sort of uh, rough around the edges a little bit. <clears throat> I mean, I only, I only did this on the train, just um, threw something together. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's uh, let's take a look at that. So that goes off to do do do. That now goes off to invoice. And notice I've put all of these in their own little folders just to make um you know sanity and all that that goes to index.php and if i scroll if i move this way <clears throat> notice we have the id now it's undefined sure um but this is the template and what we've done is we've extracted that that id <clears throat> and if i go to the browser that is the id so that is the whole mechanism behind um, parameters, parameters and putting them in onto the page and displaying them onto the page so I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly sort of halfway happy with this solution um, like I said it's a, a bit rough a bit uh, rough around the edges uh, but it is where I want this this uh, this thing to be now um, what I haven't done <laughs> is I haven't tested this as much as I would have liked um, you know I didn't have a lot of chance on the train to to do this I wait basically sat down open the laptop and I just had a flood of ideas that I needed to get down onto the onto code um, so what I would like to attempt to do um, before the stream ends is I would like to just run some tests so f I should say that this is um, not my obviously not the laptop that I take so I, I have about um, 
about 20, 30 minutes ago, before the stream happened, I did a, 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 a Git um, pull from my laptop to here, so or the, from the repository. Um, so I've, I've just tested it to the point of just clicking through those pages. I'm not too sure yet what's going to happen when I run, and you can see all of these things that I, I did. Uh, not too sure what happens when I do that. Uh, yeah, we got a failure <laughs> straight off the bat. So request URI can't be found. Now this is the problem I had when I was trying to test, oh yeah, the testing the kernel. So I tried to test the kernel uh, yesterday on the way back. And that is why I created that server factory. Uh, so let's take a look at this. This is in kernel unit helper kernel, kernel test. <clears throat> Yeah, because I'm trying to boot it. That is the exception that's been thrown. Now, that that's actually a passing test because, um, well, obviously, I'm not asserting anything. I can't even spell that. So um, that's actually working because that's blank. Um, and we, we should be looking for the exception. So I know that there is a way of, of, of looking for, asserting for exceptions. I think there is a library that I need to pull pull in. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comment this test out because, or remove it. Because even though that, that, that um, well, that's the right thing that actually gets thrown. So I need to check for that exception. Let's just remove this whole test for now. And I'll remove that folder. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, let's run those tests again. So they all pass. There's 38 tests. We did have 40. I think I've removed a couple. Um, the uh, the acceptance tests, I think, uh, don't work. Let me see if I can see those. Nope, that's not going to... It's not on my reverse search. Acceptance... Uh, oh, 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 I know, I know. <clears throat> so what I was doing, because I was running off of a different IP, I changed the acceptance suite to run off of uh, dot one, zero one rather than uh, zero zero. Let's just put that back in. <clears throat> All of the, and this, this to me proves that this needs to be configurable through perhaps a, <clears throat> excuse me, a dot env file or something. But yeah, we've got uh, we've done five tests and we've got two failures, uh, and the failures are because of the pages the the four hundred four issues. Um, we are getting the four hundred fours back, okay, but um, we're not rendering the four hundred four pages as expected. Uh, but this this page this, the the important test is this um, the invoice page test because that's actually testing the root which is, uh, let's do HTTP, locator, is it root? I forget which one it is. Yeah. So it, we're, we're actually testing these things. So I changed this as well. So uh, we're actually che checking that the, the um, these are actually being injected in the right place. Now, what, one thing I haven't done <clears throat> and I will do now, is I haven't actually tested the URI builder. So the URI builder is in the, um, <coughs> excuse me, is in helper uh, HTTP URI URI builder, which is this static function here. Uh, I, I would like to just throw a test at this and see if it sticks. So that's what we're going to do now. So that's in HTTP, whoops going to create a new directory here. We're going to do URI, uh, and then we're going to create, we're just going to, let's just copy that factory test in. So this is URI builder dot test. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's bring, make myself a little bit of room here because I can't really see much. Uh, so URI, whoops build a test, um, and that is in this namespace, so that's in URI, not root, 
Excellent. Okay, uh, let's run, first of all, well, let's run as we usually do a default. So I'm just going to remove that. Um, so this is test default. This is the URI. URI default. So what is it when we don't, you know, manipulate it? So let's do um, URI is equal to URI builder build passing in uh, the, the uh, just a blank string like so. What does that do? If I cl click on here and run that through, so that's a blank string, that is a blank uh, set of parameters that should just not you know, run because there isn't any parameters in here, but perhaps I need to do a check to make sure that there is. And then that should return this. So if we did, if we go, went back to that test, that should, should return that. And this needs to set be assert same. Um, obviously, um, passing that through. <clears throat> so because I've put in a blank string and I haven't actually had any parameters, that should be returned. Okay, so I'm going to hit save on that. I'm going to bring that up a little bit. I'm going to run the unit tests. Yep, that's worked. Okay, so let's see if we can break it again. So the whole point of doing the tests after the work is to see if you can break what you've done. Um, <laughs> that's my excuse for doing tests before instead of TDD. Um, I do like TDD. Definitely do like. I just didn't have an opportunity to do it yesterday. Uh, sometimes when you have the idea of the code in your head, you want to get the code out on on the paper f before you write the tests, and I think that's okay. You know, I w I would like to be more of t uh, of a TDD dude. Um, let's do. Um, let's put in a blank string, but this time put in a, 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 a set of things. So let's do ID one, two, three. Um, so this is test. So that I'm going to do test blank default. And this is going to be test, um, Uh, if I can spell blank, blank default with array, change that to be blank default, change that to be uh, blank default with array. And I do this, I think I, I, I mentioned before, uh, because you can you can run these through uh, individual groups when you do. So in theory, we have an array here, so we're going to loop over that. But if we if we hit the builder and just show you, um, so we, we do that, we iterate over once. But because there is nothing in the parameter, there is none of that, um, that should still be blank. So let's go back to that test, URI, URI builder. So it should still be like this. So let's run that and see if that works, which it is. That's all good. Okay. So now we've, we've, we've tested uh, that. Let's try and do something now where we have um, test. Placeholder. And we're going to do, let's do something completely different because we, we know that the invoice works. Let's do, um, foobar. So that's the, that's the, uh, placeholder. And then we're going to have an array and we're going to have foobar and we're going to do ABC. <clears throat> uh, 
okay, what's wrong here? Public function test base folder. That is the string. This is an unexpected comma. Ah, <laughs> I'm not doing it in the right thing, am I? There we go. Okay, so this now should be um, slash ABC. That is what we hope to achieve here. So this is uh, URI placeholder. And I should have done this actually. I, I this is this is the process I should have done uh, on the train. I should I should have just sort of done this first and went right. I want to supply this. Um, I want to supply that. This is what I want to get out of this. Uh, but um, I didn't, <laughs> so I'm doing it now. So let's hit save, run that test, and that's passed. So yeah, I think I think that's good. Uh, any other way I can break this? What happens if I put in Um, broken placeholder. So instead of foobar, we're going to just have foo, but we're going to break it like that. So the return should be that because it shouldn't have picked up the full placeholder. So let's run that. Let's do uh, placeholder. Let's do broken placeholder on there, just for consistency. Yeah, yeah, that's worked. Excellent. Okay, so what are we on now? Forty-two. Okay, so that that's uh, that's filled that up me up with a bit of confidence. There's all sorts of other things that I need to test. The thing is, I've got to this point with this project now where I don't actually know what I've tested and what I haven't tested. I know that there's 42 tests, but I, I from a glance, I mean, I know that they're, that they're all listed here. Um, but what I would like, what I usually do when I get to this point in the project, or even before I, I, I do any tests on the project, is I like to run um, code coverage just to just to get a clear indication of what has and hasn't been tested. What are the risks of this project? Um, and I think that's what I'm going to do offline is I'm going to install uh, um, xdebug <clears throat> to the Docker file uh, here. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to install xdebug, I think for two reasons. One, because I can then run a uh, codeception using code coverage. It's going to take a little bit longer, but at least we have um, some code coverage to show. Uh, and then I can actually see what needs to be tested. And then I'm going to attempt to test those things. I'm not going to aim for 100% code coverage because I think, you know, that's just a, a, a challenge. And even though you get uh, can achieve 100% code coverage, that doesn't mean that your code is going to be nice and fixed and cleaned and all of that stuff. It just means that you're adhering to that, that, uh, that standard. I'm not worried about that at all for this project, but it also means having X debug, it means that I can actually step through um, and create some debugging um, through PHP Storm, uh, which I think I definitely, definitely need to do, especially when we start going down then to the deeper dark depths of the of the of um, the, this framework. The routing here, I think, is, is, is getting stable. It's more stable than it was perhaps last week, uh, definitely. Um, but after this, we're going to move on to the ORM. So we're going to be making connections to the database and we're going to be doing some, uh, creating some schemas for the invoicing stuff. There's also other bits and pieces that um, I want. I've started to create, <coughs> I created a long time ago. Um, this is in the uh, repositories here. So we've got a repository for uh, an invoice and we've also got a, a, a very, uh, an abstract entity. I'm going to create some entities for the invoice and the invoice items and so forth. Uh, but when we get to the point of actually displaying things on the page, like lists of things, I want to be able to step through those things. Uh, and you need to have XDebug to, to do all those. 
uh, because you need to have that um, running in the background. So Xdebug can be a little bit of a, a tricky beast to install. So I'm going to do this offline and then I'll come back and then hopefully I will, in the next stream, I'll have something to demonstrate um, to show you the, the lines of how much code I've tested. Um, and then we're going to probably focus on a little bit more testing, a little bit more refactoring um, on this too. So the next stream is probably going to be, I'm going to say probably tomorrow. Um, I'm not going to say what time it is yet. Uh, it's going to be in the morning. It's either going to be seven or half seven. Um, but uh, do check on Twitter, which is the at how to code well Twitter handle, because I'll put that out. Uh, as a message and also here on Twitch too. And then later on, hopefully today, I'm going to put this stream and Monday stream on YouTube as well, which is the How to Code Well uh, YouTube channel. Also, if you haven't done so, please do subscribe to the How to Code Well um, YouTube channel because there's all sorts of stuff on there, all sorts of goodness. This is just a very small portion of what I do on How to Code Well. I also run a podcast, so that's howtocodewell.fm. And every Friday, I have a, a lovely guest come on, coming on, um, and we talk about web development programming, and uh, they have some fantastic advice to give, uh, which is wonderful to, to have that ability to um, get people on and talk about web and programming and what they get up to. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to shoot now because I've got some uh, other bits and pieces to do before uh, I actually start my, my standard working day, but Guys, thank you. And girls, do uh, do have a good a good Wednesday. Happy coding, everyone. And I'll see you hopefully tomorrow, if not on YouTube. Cheers. Bye.